It is day four of the winter by annual good leaf thumb. Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you are watching My Books Are Me. Today, as I said, is day four of the Winter Bar and Bibliothon. And today's challenge is, um, that was in the book DIY. When you do a DIY project revolving around something that features in a book. And naturally, I went for Harry Potter. As soon as I saw this challenge, I knew exactly what I was going to do. And that is to create a Harry Potter wand. I found this method on Pinterest about 18, to 18 months to two years ago um, and I made a whole stack of wands and I've just made a few more for this tutorial so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in making these wands and whether you end up making them. I'm going to link below in the description to a blog post where I have the method written out as long as the, where I have the method completely written out as well as pictures of the steps so that you can follow that um, if you want. I've also got some links to some things that you're going to need for this tutorial. So let's go. So these are the kind of ones that I'm going to show you guys how to make today. You literally don't need any creative expertise with this because there's, I don't feel like there's any way that you can stuff these up to be honest. Everything you're going to need you will be able to find laying around the house. The first thing you're going to need is some white paper A4, nothing special. You're also going to need a glue stick, again nothing special. You're going to need a glue gun which I have plugged in heating up already and you're going to need some extra um, glue sticks. Um, depending how many ones you're going to make you're going to need quite a lot of glue. Um, and finally you're obviously going to need some paint, Very any type of paint will do as long as it's acrylic. Um, doesn't have to be really fancy acrylic paint either as long as it can paint. So it's really easy. Grab one corner and start rolling the paper up as tightly as possible. And once you start getting some of it rolling up, um, get a good bit and then start putting glue onto the paper. This will obviously help stick it all together but it will also make it a little bit stronger because this is only paper, there is nothing else that will make it um, strong. So when you've rolled up a few of the ones, what you're going to want to do is just um, slice the ends so that they're flush with you know everything. Um, you will notice that this end is squishy, um, in the middle is a bit sturdier and the ends, the other end is a bit squishy. That's just what it's going to be like. The next step is to fill the hole at the end of the wand with glue. So now you've got, not that you can really see it, but glue at the ends there. Um, and let that dry as much as you can um, before going on to the next step. So the next step is decorating the wand to give it some texture and to make it look like wood. So for example, some of the ones I already actually have created, um, we just have a lot of glue on this one nothing special and then for example this one is just filled with dots and everything so for this you just literally go crazy with the glue Now you will see that most of the official ones do just decorate the end of it. You don't really get the whole way. So then what you have to do is sand the wand somewhere where if you're making a batch of them, they won't um, stick to one another. I'm quite lucky. I have a pencil pot that has nine holes in it, so I can make nine at a time here. Um, and all I do is just stand the wand in it and it will stand there while it dries. You have to make sure the glue completely dries before um, you go on to the next step of painting it.
Now there is another method that you can use to add a little bit more detail to um, your wand and that is using beads. Now I'm not actually going to show you guys this because I don't really like this method but as you can see in this wand that I have already made I actually have beads stuck into the glue so as you are gluing it you put the beads in. It is quite tricky. Obviously it depends how big your beads are. I used quite small ones here so it was well let's just say I got burned quite a lot with this one. Another method I have thought of, which I'm, again I'm not going to try, but it would be putting feathers into the wand just to give it a bit more of a texture look, textured look. So once you have done your wands and got glue on it, um, you have to let these set, as I said, completely um, because once you put the paint on, um, it will still dry but it will just take that little bit longer and you don't want to accidentally smudge any of the glue or anything like that. So I recommend waiting about an hour for that just to completely dry. Um, but it does depend on how much glue you used um, and what, for example, the temperature is like in the house and stuff like that. So the final step is painting. And I'm not actually going to paint for you guys in this tutorial, but I'm just going to show you some of the previous ones that I have made. Um, I tend to just stick with the natural um, browns. Um, and I actually also like to accent the, um, the lumps and bumps really with different colors. Obviously, this is this is a obviously this is a really creative um, thing. You don't need to stick to a particular guideline. You can just once you have your wand rolled up, you can design it however you want, and it doesn't really matter um, what you decide to paint it or what you decide to glue onto it. Um, you could literally just have a purple and pink wand for all anyone cares like it is your own thing if you're making this for yourself go mad now there is one final step that you can do if you were interested and that is making a wand box um, if you were say giving this as a gift then this would be something to make it even better um, and just a little bit more personal a little bit more authentic for this, all I had was a big sheet of black cardboard and I cut out the two halves of the box. Now the box is exactly one centimeter bigger than the actual wand, so if you have different sizes of wands, you're going to have to measure them. Um, and it is three centimeters wide, although yeah, it's three centimeters wide and three centimeters deep. Um, and the lid is only two centimeters deep and slightly wider so that it fits on top. On the inside here, I have a nice ribbon just to make it feel like a proper Ollivander's wand. And I have also included um, a little tag that tells you what this wand is, um, which I think is a cute addition, especially again, if you are giving it to someone. I, am, I feel like it's also a good idea to say if you're having a birthday party and you have heaps of wands in maybe like a pencil pot or something, um, then people can pick out which one they want. And then I have the official Ollivander's um, label on top. Oh. And I have a box number at the end. In my blog post, I do have links to these downloads so you can go get them for yourself. And that is it. That is how you can make your very own wand from Harry Potter. Um, like I said, this is such a really creative process um, and you don't need to have any creative talent at all. You can do whatever you want. You can try and replicate official wands. You can try and replicate these ones. You can do whatever you want. It is completely up to you. So if you guys enjoyed that tutorial, these wands are perfect for kids and for Potter themed parties, especially because the official Harry Potter ones are kind of expensive. And if you have kids or if you are a child or if you are a big child, um, if you want to actually be able to run around with a wand and pretend to duel people and everything like that, it's kind of hard. It's, especially for kids, they have the ability to end up probably breaking the wand by accident. They could fall over, snap the wand, and you will have lost this official wand that did kind of cost a bit of money. If you have these paper wands, it doesn't matter if a child breaks it, if it gets squashed, if it gets ripped, if it gets wet, if it gets stood on, because if you make a nice batch of them and have extra, you can always give them another wand. It is perfect for anything. Like I made a few ones for some friends and family and they've loved them so much. So just go wild with it, have fun, and let me know in the comments below if you are planning on doing these wands. And feel free to tweet me some photos and stuff if you end up making these wands, because 
I just really love this method. It is a great way to make wands and it is just fun. So we'll see you guys for tomorrow's video challenge. Tomorrow's challenge is the bookish music video, which my video is so cringeworthy that it's kind of funny and I'm kind of worried about putting it up on the internet, but hey, who cares? So I'll see you guys then. Bye.